What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an updated tool for creating terrains quickly from your meshes in Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the Blender Auto Terrainer is a tool from Samuel Francis. And basically what it does is it takes your mesh and it automatically generates terrain from it. So you create a simple mesh and then it adds settings in there to be able to adjust things like uh, like the noise of the material, um, the displacement of the material. It also adds textures, other things like that. So it's a pretty cool tool for really quickly taking simple meshes like this one and creating more realistic looking meshes. And so there's a free version that you can download right here. So you can just bring this in it's got the grass setup. It's got the materials. It's got the terrain settings right here. And then there's also a couple options in here that come with more foliage options, or also the desert version right here. If you want to don't, if you want to donate five or more dollars, so that's a great way to support the developer if you do want to do that. But if you want to just download the free version right here, you just type in a value of zero and click on the purchase button right here. But let's jump over into Blender and take a look at the way that it works. So basically what this does, and this is the example file that you can bring in, basically what this does is it um, takes a simple mesh. So if I tab into edit mode like this, I can kind of see that this is a pretty simple mesh in here and it generates a terrain automatically from that mesh. So say that I was to come over here and select, whoops, say that I was to come over here and select these vertices right here, and move them, notice what this is doing is this is automatically generating that terrain in here um, with things like noise and other things like that. So it also kind of automatically generates these cliffs on the ends once you get past a certain height or a certain, um, once you get past a certain slope on the front side. So it is also automatically adding this material and there is also a tool in here for placing grass on your scene as well. So uh, let's take a look at how we can add this into your own file in Blender. So basically what you need to do is, first off, it's always a good idea to look at the node setup over here because you can figure out what's being used. But basically, this is using the auto terrainer. It's also using a grass scatterer geometry node setup. So these are both geometry node setups. And then it's also using a grass object in order to scatter on the surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna jump into Blender and have my own fresh version in here and I'm going to append this, right? Because right now, say that I was to um, toggle on a modifier and add a geometry node setup, there's nothing in here. So what we need to do is we need to go do an append and you wanna go find the auto terrainer file and you wanna go into the node setup. So we're gonna go into, or actually node tree and we're gonna bring in the terrainer base, we're gonna bring in the scatterer and we're gonna bring in the grass. Now, there may be some others in here that we'd wanna bring in as well, but we're gonna go with those for right now. So if I bring in the terrainer base, notice how now that is in my file and I can reference it in the geometry node modifier that I applied to this object. So we'll actually apply this to both of these just so you can kind of see. So we're adding geometry nodes here like this and notice what this has done is this has added terrain to our simple meshes. And so considering the fact that I've actually done zero work to this, I've just kind of extruded some planes, this terrain already looks really good. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and we'll add a light. So we'll just add a sun in here for right now, just so we've got a little bit of light. Point it this way and we'll just add a little strength to that. And we'll jump over into rendered mode. And so notice how if I select this, there are different settings that I can um, adjust in here to adjust the way that this is going to look. So for example, I can adjust the resolution of the up and down that's created in here like this. And one thing about appending these is for whatever reason, the input names don't come in. So I'm kind of looking at the version in the example file to see what these do, but this is basically going to allow you to adjust the cliff noise and the ground noise. Let's say that I was to make this a little steeper. So I'm just gonna move this over right here. So notice when I do that, and I'm gonna to toggle off my proportional editing, but notice how when I do that, what happens is once this gets beyond a certain point, this actually generates a cliff. And so when it generates the cliff, this is where these settings are going to allow you to kind of adjust the way that that cliff works. So for example, right now this cliff is giving a very strong um, effect in here. And I'm just gonna dial it back a little bit using the strength setting right here. But you can randomize that cliff like this. You can also set the scale 
of the displacement in here. And by the way, probably if you were to toggle in here, hit the A key and then subdivide this and add a little additional geometric detail, you're probably gonna get a little bit better result, but it does a pretty good job with very little geometric detail in here. But you can also adjust things like the roughness that material in here and the distortion that's applied in here just by using these settings. But you can adjust the cliff. You can also adjust the ground, right? So notice how, for example, if I adjust the scale of the displacement in here, it's going to give me much stronger displacement on my ground if I do this. And then you can always adjust the seed in here in order to adjust the result that's created. And so again, this also works on flat surfaces. So if I tab into edit mode, notice how this is just a very simple mesh in here. And I can kind of see it just by toggling off this modifier. Um, but basically this is just a very simple mesh until I toggle this on. And then you can see what this is doing, which is coming in here and adding additional detail really quickly. And then, you know, as I make adjustments, right? So if I was to take all of these, I'm going to turn some proportional editing on, but if I move this up and down, or so if I move it up, it's going to give me kind of a cliff face, um, or I can just kind of move it around in order to get a quick terrain result. But if you want to create a fast terrain, this is a super cool tool for doing that. Now, one other thing that you can also do with this is you can append the, the scatterer. So if I append the scatterer, right here. Notice how that brings in not only the geometry node setting, but also a grass asset right here. Well, if I take this and we'll go ahead and use this one right here. If I add a second geometry node modifier right here, and I apply the scatterer, what that's going to do is first off, it's going to add some of this green material to your surface. So it's randomly going to place um, some green material on here, but then you can also set this to reference either a single object, which in this case would be the grass piece right here, or a collection. Now, one thing about this that I'm finding, and it's always a good idea to apply your rotation and scale before you do this, but one thing that I'm finding in here is this noise spread is what sets if the objects are going to show up by default. So usually this noise spread is spread is set too high. But what I can do in here is I can bring that noise spread down. And now notice what that's doing is that's coming in here and that's adding grass um, to wherever those green areas are in here. And this is all definitely adjustable, meaning you have the ability to adjust um, the scale of the map that's applied in here like this. You can adjust the roughness, which again is setting the way this is mapped and placed in here. But it's basically using geometry nodes in order to place this grass on the surface right here. All right, and then one other thing you can do is if you create a collection and you put some different uh, grass objects in here, you can also reference those. So right now, for example, this is referencing that individual object, um, but I could reference one of these other objects like this. Notice how if I render that, that's going to show up just fine, but I can also tell it to use a collection and I can reference that grass collection in here. Well, when I do that, what that's going to do is that's going to add basically or scatter anything that's in that collection on this surface. So now I'm able to adjust things like the density, but I'm also able to adjust things like the location, of that grass, just like this. And I probably want to jump out of rendered mode right here so that my computer doesn't explode. Um, but notice how I can use this in order to quickly generate or scatter custom objects in here as well. All right, so for quick generation of terrains and just having something that you can kind of plug in here and make terrains, this is actually a pretty cool tool, especially considering the fact you can download it for free. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about the auto terrainer? Um, I will link to it in the notes down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.